Welcome to UV Physics Academy. So here we are discussing quantum error correction. Okay. So the quantum computers are limited. The reason is uh, entanglement states are not durable. So for example, if you consider uh, decoherence, that is interaction of a qubit with the environment. So then whenever a qubit interacts with the environment, there is a chance of uh, error like a bit flip error or a phase flip error. So for example, if I take one uh, entanglement state, so I can take this is one by root two, zero, zero plus one, one, like this. So this is the entanglement state. Uh, for example, if one of the qubit, let us say uh, this qubit, one of the qubit uh, uh, interacts with the environment okay if one of the qubit if one of the qubit decohere sorry then the entanglement state will be lost then entanglement state will be lost okay so uh, this is the major issue then what is the uh, goal of this uh, uh, quantum error correction so the goal of quantum error correction is to detect the error and uh, correct the error by using more number of qubits so this here it is uh, to detect and uh, correct the error using more number of uh, qubits more number of uh, qubits okay fine so then how to do this there is a small issue that is quantum measurement for example I have a qubit a qubit is always in a superposition state that is alpha 0 plus beta 1. Whenever you make some measurement on this, the quantum state will be disturbed or destroyed or collapsed. So here the state will be state will be uh, collapsed. That means superposition state lost. Then how to make this measurement? So there is one uh, basic idea. So that is uh, encoded space. So here the idea is uh, whatever the quantum information we have, we, we will encode that information and we will make a measurement in that encoded space. The reason, uh, the benefit of this is the encoded space does not give any information about the uh, whatever the initial state or whatever the, the quantum information we have. So then the original quantum information uh, would be disturbed okay so here the, uh, then how can we do this for example you have this uh, a zero instead of taking zero I encoded this information uh, into uh, three zeros like this and if you have one so this can be taken as triple one like this so how it is possible so don't think it is a, a copy of a qubit this is a possible with the entanglement. So this is the repetition by using quant uh, by using entanglement. So how it is possible? For example, you have so qubit state. Let us say this is alpha zero plus uh, beta one. And let us take this is a zero and here also zero. So by using entanglement. So here I'm taking a C naught, control C naught, sorry, control naught here. So then if it is a zero, so the, uh, if the size state here, it is a zero here, then it is a zero, no change in the other two qubits. Plus beta, since it is a one, it's a control naught gate. So this is also one and this is also one. Here you will get a triple one like this. So this is a repetition of these uh, uh, qubits, but not at all a copy. And this is a possible with the 
help of this uh, entanglement fine so what what is the basic idea if you have a quantum information that is a psi equal to alpha 0 plus beta 1 so this is encoded so this is encoded to the uh, encoded as alpha sorry this is alpha 0 0 triple 0 plus beta 1 1 then what okay so we have encoded the information then how we will uh, correct this uh, error okay so the idea is for example here we have an hilbert space with the k number of qubits if you have k number of qubits the dimension of the hilbert space is nothing but a 2 power k and what is this a Hilbert space? What are these are k qubits? These are encoded bits, encoded qubits. For example, here earlier we have single qubits, but we encoded to three. So that's why this Hilbert space dimension for that earlier whatever we have encoded that is a eight dimension. So we can say that this is a, en these are encoded bits. And now this one we are mapping to another Hilbert space. Let us take a, this is the another Hilbert space, okay, and where we have n number of qubits. Then the dimension is nothing but a 2 power n. And remember one thing. So here we have k qubits. In the first Hilbert space and that is mapped to another Hilbert space of uh, n qubits and remember this n is uh, greater than k now we got it out so that means we have n minus k number of extra qubits what these extra qubits are doing here so these extra qubits that means uh, extra n minus extra n minus k qubits are used to store the information of whatever the initial state are used to are used to store the information of this encoded qubits that is a better so qubits are used to store this encoded qubits how many k k number of encoded qubits right fine nice then you get a doubt okay so you are using some extra number of qubits uh, to store the initial information then how we will detect so for example if you uh, detect maybe the quantum states will be disturbed okay so but here we are doing the measurement in this Hilbert space but remember we are using those gates which won't disturb uh, the, the given or the uh, initial quantum information state. So we'll make measurement here. So quantum measurement. So measurement. Uh, in this measurement, we'll use so quantum gates which do not disturb the initial state which do not disturb the initial state yes okay so this is the basic idea of uh, the quantum error correction okay so now let us So let us discuss the what are the steps uh, for this uh, quantum and uh, quantum error correction the first one is transformation so in this first step what we will do we will encode so we here encode the information encode the information by using entanglement by using 
entanglement. Fine. So that means uh, here this will this transformation will enable repetition of the code. So this will enable a repetition of the, the code. Sorry, repetition of uh, qubits. So I hope uh, you understand what is this. That means uh, if you have a zero, so that a zero is encoded to three zeros and the one is encoded to a triple one like this. Fine. The next one is a syndrome. So in this syndrome, here uh, this is used to detect, this is used to detect the error or diagnose the error. So now again one more thing uh, what we are saying here. So if you want to detect the error definitely you have to make measurement, quantum measurement. But again quantum measurement will disturb the system. That's why here we are doing this measurement. So here the measurement done by measurement done by a parity check it's like parity check so because the parity uh, so, so because the parity operation won't disturb the quantum state for example if you have this uh, p cap operates on psi, we'll get a plus r minus a psi. So which is having an eigenvalue equation with eigenvalues plus r minus. So it won't disturb the quantum state. Fine. The last and final one is a correction. So here we will correct, I mean uh, using, uh, here we will use some quantum gates, okay, use quantum gates. which do not disturb the original state, same thing, which do not disturb the original state, nice. So these are the uh, uh, three steps, the, I mean these are the uh, three steps to you know, detect and uh, correct the quantum error. So now the question is uh, types of errors. How many types of uh, errors we have? First of all, why this error occur? Because we are using so many quantum gates and then there is a possibility of uh, interaction with the, I mean, th there is a possibility of a decoherence and uh, there exists error, okay. So here we are talking about a single qubit error, okay, single qubit error. The single qubit gate is what? It's a two by two matrix. So here I am representing this error with uh, a 2 by 2 matrix, let us say A, B, C, D. So this is the uh, gate which causes the error or something like that, okay. It is a 2 by 2. So but we know any 2 by 2 matrix can be represented as a linear combination of uh, Pauli matrices. That means it is like uh, C0 I plus C1 X plus C2 Y plus a C3J. Any 2 by 2 matrix can be written like this. So where this uh, C naught is nothing but half into a trace of that E, that uh, error gate, I mean the gate causes the error and C1, this is nothing but half into trace of E into X, okay, that ABCD matrix into Pauli X matrix and this is C2 is also nothing but half into trace of E into Y and this is C3 that is a half into trace of uh, EJ. So basically these are uh, uh, Pauli matrices that means uh, I, X, Y, J is formed a basis for the error okay. So these forms uh, basis Okay, so basically these are the, uh, I mean, for example, if you take this uh, i, there will be no error and this x, 
This is this called bit flip error. And if you take this a z, that means if you take x operate on zero, it is a flip to one. And if you take one oper operated by, I mean x operated on one, it is a flip to zero. So z operator, uh, this z of z poly z matrix or operator, uh, this gate will give you phase flip. That means if z operates on zero, you'll get zero only with even parity and z operates on 1 this will be minus 1. So here uh, we have that uh, phase change. So then what about this y? This uh, what about this y? So y can be written as this y can be written as uh, z x with minus i. That means uh, x is giving the bit flip error and uh, z will give you this uh, phase flip error. So y will give you both bit flip and uh, phase. And uh, phase flip. That's it. Okay, fine. So uh, this is a small introduction about this uh, quantum error correction. Now let us discuss. So what is a bit flip error and how to detect it and what are the uh, stabilizers and how to correct it. Let us discuss. So uh, we will discuss in the next video about that uh, bit flip and uh, phase flip error. Okay.